Um, All righty, Mr. Gatekeeper. Uh, here around the northeast end of Georgia. Remember now, we got that going on. Had a, a buddy uh, send this to me and tell me that uh, this uh, girl has been a very, very naughty girl and needed some uh, some adjustment to her. This hooker right here. <laughs> Uh, this is an old school hooker, probably older than I've been alive. My first amplifier was a Hooker 100. This is the base version of it. And uh, pretty much, whoever had been in here uh, before me had, uh, see it takes stud mount transistors. And the person that was in here before me had attempted to put regular flange mount transistors in it, but not screw them down and just hope that they would be against the metal good enough to uh, survive. And the fella got lucky because they did. They're they're uh, they're not too strong, um, but they did survive. But uh, so I just went ahead and just did away with those. Went ahead and did a good upgrade for this fella. Because uh, those transistors, they just wasn't producing a, a good enough of watt. I was only getting about 120 watts out of it at the most, which I know this is a Hooker 100, but that was with me uh, driving it pretty hard. Just with a normal 4-watt radio, it was only doing about 60, 60, 70 watts. So what I, had, what I went ahead and done for the fella is went ahead and done a complete rebuild. All righty, we went ahead and done a complete rebuild. Before we really get deep into it, let me take you over here and show you what came out of it. Okay, fancy case. All righty. The heat sink here was mounted on the back. Okay. And the board here was mounted inside. So. Yeah. There's a few things wrong on this board as well. The re there was one relay that was not interacting at all to voltage of it actuating. The other one was, with, but that was the relay uh, for the uh, preamp. He did say that someone uh, attempted to put these relays in here, but it appeared that they did not put them in here right. I'm seeing some jumpers down here. It, it just shows me that somebody had a, some problems putting these relays in here using these jumpers. So this board's kind of just been hacked up a bit. The SO239s, uh, one of them were completely shot. It, if you can see here how spread apart. I mean, uh, the, the PL259 was barely even making connection when you screwed it on in there. It's pretty, I mean, it has no grooves whatsoever in there. So we went ahead and put two new uh, SO239s on here for them. So I went ahead and just thought it'd be best for me just to go ahead and trash this board. Uh, maybe take a part or two off of it in the future. But just go ahead and just do away with it. Okay. And uh, we went ahead and did away with this isolation transformer here. Uh, it's just something extra they threw in, just taking up space. For this particular application of what I've done with it now, there's no need for it. Uh, there was actually twice the amount of uh, filter capacitance. And uh, just one of these is even overkill for what we're doing here, man. This is a uh, 35,000 microfarad. <laughs> And we're not going to be pulling, man. I mean, two 454s. I mean, come on, man. Just one of these is perfect, man. So we're just going to go ahead and just put this to the side here. And I'm not like some builders. Some builders will just take your parts and just uh, throw them in their part bin. I actually, any part that I wish to keep, if the uh, person allows me to, I actually deduct it from the price because... I, mean, I just want to treat everybody as perfect possible. So what we went ahead and did is I just kind of took all this up and just kind of deducted about 30 bucks from the total price. Yeah, that's about what it's worth to me. Transistors equal most of that, probably about 15 bucks for both of them. I could probably use them and maybe a repair in the future. They're, they're not, like I said, the HFV value is pretty low on them. They're not too strong, but, uh, but anyway, let's go over here to the nitty gritty.
You got a quite a bit of labor hours in this uh, unit here. What we went ahead and did is for the hole in the back, we went ahead and threw a fan in there. It's good to have some airflow. Went ahead and put you four portholes down here for the fan. Okay. Um, by the way, this this is a square you see here this is just where that heat sink was sitting i've tried to rub it off man it's just i mean good god it's been on there over 25 years plus so it's just kind of made an indention mark on there so we did the best we could with that so we got you a fan on there a good strong 80 millimeter fan got you some portholes for the air to flow through all righty we went ahead and repositioned this transformer we repositioned the um the uh, tri-bridge rectifier, single-phase rectifier, reposition the cap. I mean, we pretty much stripped this whole unit down to bare metal. We went ahead and took this off. There was uh, two, uh, two repairs we had to do. We went ahead and took this whole switch panel out and off. We replaced all your LEDs with blue. Not one of the LEDs were working. The uh, old-school red LEDs, not one of them were working. And there was a short in the preamp switch as well. So that's one reason why the preamp wouldn't even work when it was in there. But the amp did, uh, the, pre the uh, relay did work. It did engage, but it just, uh, the main relay wouldn't. And uh, we had the uh, resistor down here, which is, uh, I can't remember the value. I think it may be a 68 ohm, 62 ohm. It was totally just seared in half, man. Yeah, and I threw that in the trash. So we went ahead and replaced that with a big 5 watt there for you, man, to keep that good and cool if you ever want to run it on low. And uh, put dump some power into that. And what we had to go ahead and do is rearrange three of the traces on here. Because if you come here to the front, where it says AM, FM, CW, SSB, well, that's still true. Up is AM, FM with no delay. Down, it engages the SSB delay, okay? But what we went ahead and did is they had an LED right here. So when you flipped it up, this LED engaged. Well, to get everything to work properly, what I went ahead and done is just use this LED right here for your transmit LED, okay? So I had to go ahead and cut the trace. Because basically after we done all this, we had four wires here just kind of hanging. Basically, I just had to make me a little key here, man, and uh, kind of mark the wires so I can see which wire was what and how to just trace them down with a continuity meter and a uh, voltmeter or whatever. So I had to make sense of all these wires here, man. And what I had to actually go ahead and do was, like I said, I had to go back here and break the trace in three different spots and rearrange and kind of rewire the whole thing here man that's what these wires you see here this is the transmit wire and also your ssb delay going to this cap here that's bringing it and then bringing it back to the switch there so we went ahead and done all that man and got all that done and popped back on for you and uh went ahead and built a uh 454 you got lucky, man. Had these brand spanking new old stock MRF 454s, man. It's hard to find these these transistors right here new, man. This right here is the old school 454s. I got lucky and uh, got a couple from a buddy of mine not too, too long ago. So you got your two brand spanking new MRF 454s in there, man. Went ahead and uh, tuned it up for you went ahead and put the fixed caps in there for you man got the trimmers out put the fixed caps in there and uh, another thing i went ahead and done for you is i went ahead and regulated your fan right here i could have just put a resistor on the fan and it would have been fine but you would have had to hear that fan come on now focus in things having some problems focusing I don't know if this light over here is messing it up or what. There we go. Um, if I would have just put a resistor on there, you would have had to hear that fan slow down every time you key, man. So this right here is going to keep it a constant uh, flow, whether you're keyed or unkeyed. Okay. All right. About the only other thing I believe we got going on on here is. This is a bleed resistor, okay? All right. When I turn this box on, okay, and turn it off, 
That fan is not enough to drain this big whopping 30, 35,000 microfarad capacitor. So without this bleeder resistor here, these LEDs would stay on for about five, six, seven minutes, man. You know, and uh, you know, I don't like that, man. I want it to be working properly so you won't have to walk away. I mean, some people wouldn't care, but I do. <laughs> And I went ahead and put it down here to kind of get into the airflow of the air, the way the air is going to be coming around this box this way and through the fans just to kind of keep it cool. This resistor will get hot, man. That's what they're made for, man, these power resistors. It'll get pretty warm. That's what it's supposed to do, though. Okay. So there's your bleeder resistor. We just put it down there to kind of keep it a little extra cool. All right, man, we went through this thing, man, and uh, kind of just done a full rebuild to it, man, and just kind of put a little twist to it. And, and uh, you know, I had to get this uh, heat sink here. Got a big heat sink on here for you, man. Real good, tall, good, strong heat sink. I had to get it positioned just good so this airflow can, you know, come through this transformer, come through the cracks when this top is on here, and will be actually forced through these uh, fins of this heat sink on out the back. So this will be the only place the air can come out through is these four portholes. And I mean, it works well, man. Very well. All right, man. Let's go ahead and let you see this puppy in action, man. That's pretty much is uh, turned into a Hooker 350, if you ask me, man. <laughs> so it's no longer a Hooker 100, man. It's a Hooker 350, if you ask me. Hooker 350 or uh, 401. We got the voltmeter here to show you the float volts, let you see what it's dropping to. That's her letter number. I'm almost done. <laughs> All right, that's my girlfriend calling. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this. Uh, go ahead and pop this on here. Let's see what we're gonna be putting for her. Oh, All right, 21 watts today. He was doing 19 yesterday. <laughs> uh, last night or night before night, it was pretty, pretty cool, man. I think that's what it was. Pretty cold that night. So, all right, so we're gonna be putting about 21 watts, Pete. All right. All right. This P P R M S. That right there is low. That's where that resistor is engaged. This right here is high. Okay, so that's kind of, I guess that's why they call it PEP. You're going to get more swing, but it, you know, it's low, but you're going to get more swing out of an RMS. You're going to get more of a higher dead key and all that, man. But that's pretty much what's up with that right there. Get your preamp on and off here. Get the transmit LED right here, man. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and pop this thing on low. Let's see what this puppy's going to be doing. All right, we got about 240 watts. Take a look at the reflect here. We got a uh, 10 watt slug in reverse. 100 is 10, 40 is 4, 2 is 2 watts, and between that is 1. Beautiful tune. All right, so it does about anywhere from 240 to 250, 260 on low. All right, let's go ahead and pop this cotton picker on high. It's kind of weird how they got it. A lot of the motor boxes are done the same way there. All right, about a one watt dead key produces about 50 watts. Right there around 50 watts. No, look at that. Oh, look at that right there, man. <laughs> I love this little box here, man. No, that thing is beautiful. Beautiful. We are on a live antenna right now, too. We're not even on the dummy load. No. Woo. Well, this thing will get up and roll, man. I'll tell you what, man. So pr pretty much, she peaks right there about 4, 450. 
that that what you saw before said that's just a quick spike when I'm on uh, letting the mic go for some reason this this mic right here I'm using a 29 Bluetooth man it's just a bench radio this thing is real noisy internally and that's why you'll see them peak sometimes up man sometimes you'll just key and you'll see a thousand on the digital there but we're about to be taking this digital out of line and going all bird see y'all bear with me with that we might still leave it in just to show the peak for a few people man but uh now we, you know, i'm gonna be using two birds at all times all right so let's go ahead and let you see the float voltage go ahead and kind of let you see all aspects of what's going on right here all right see how it floats about 17.6 volts on my dead key it goes down to about 15.9 Oh, tell, 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 tell. Oh. So it drops there about 15.2. Good working voltage, man. 15 volts, 15.2. Two 450, uh, 454s. 